You're already relatively familiar with accusative case pronouns. Me, you, him, her, etc. From having used them as the direct objects of sentences. For instance, you know that er can be used as the subject of a sentence, but that in would be used to refer to the same noun if it were the direct object of the sentence instead. In German, though, the accusative case is also used following certain prepositions. For comparison purposes, here are the pronouns in the nominative case. These will look familiar. You use these whenever you conjugate verbs, because verbs are conjugated to match subjects. So we could also just call these subject pronouns. Now let's take a look at the corresponding pronouns in the accusative case. Ich becomes mich, du becomes dich, er becomes ihn, similar to der becoming den or ein becoming einen. Z remains Z and S remains S, but via becomes uns, ia turns into euch, but Z and Z remain Z and Z, though the former form is capitalized. The prepositions to watch out for in the accusative case, of course, are the ones that are different in the accusative case from the non nominative case. Ich becomes mich, du becomes dich, wir becomes uns, ihr becomes euch, and you're already familiar with er becoming ihn. There are several prepositions in German that always put the nouns following them into the accusative case. These prepositions are durch, which usually means through, für, which often means for, gegen, which means against, ohne, which means without, um, which means at, only when used with a time, not with a place, and bis, which means until. We'll be focusing mostly on für for now, but please feel free to learn the others whenever you feel ready. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples that use the preposition für. We've left out the pronouns in the sentences for now. Notice that each blank comes after the word für, which means that each pronoun will have to be in the accusative case. Pause the video now if you think you can figure out what should go in the blanks. In the first blank, one person is asking for help. Can you please clean the windows for me? So our answer should be mich. In the second one, we are addressing one person informally. But instead of du, we need dich, since our pronoun has to be in the accusative case. The same goes for the third one. Bob would be replaced by er in some instances, but because of the word für, we need to use the accusative form of the masculine pronoun. So here it will be ihn. Feminine and neuter nouns keep their pronouns in the accusative case. So we'll have Z and then S in the next two sentences. In the sixth sentence, we are asking if you can do something for us. This works very similarly to English. In English, we wouldn't say, can you feed the cat for we? We'd say, can you feed the cat for us? Uns sounds a lot like us, so that may be a helpful way to remember it. The next one usually stumps English speakers who don't have a plural informal form of address in their language. We're addressing two people informally, so we can't use dich. That would be for only one person. We also can't use ia 
because that's the nominative case form, not the accusative case form. Instead, we need to use euch. Finally, the word for they and the formal form of you are the same. Z in both the nominative and accusative cases. But notice that the formal form, as always, will be capitalized here regardless of sentence position. Finally, let's review the essentials of accusative case prepositions. After the preposition für and certain other prepositions that you'll learn more about later, you need to use the accusative case rather than the nominative case. Specifically, you will need to use phrases like für mich, für dich, für ihn, für uns, and für euch rather than the nominative case versions of those pronouns.